Okay, so on the bench today, I have a 62 TE out of a 2012 Chrysler Town & Country. And the typical problem with this uh, was a clogged screen. It stopped moving when it got hot. This transmission was brought to me over the counter, and I do have a little time with it. And being the fact that I have some time with it, uh, we're going to kind of rebuild and assemble this together in different parts. So today, we're going to do the input drum and stack it up. And we're going to do the low drum, which is a new updated drum with the non-rotational rings. I have the old one to show you. Um, there wasn't a problem with reverse, but you can see the ring land is way worn out. And the direct drum, we're going to do that with new all new clutches and steels. And then we're going to assemble the compounder assembly. And of course, we will assemble the uh, input drum as well. All right, so I'm going to try to do this in uh, different parts, like we'll do one section at a time, you know, we'll do the valve body one time, uh, then there's the pump and the planet set, and then we we'll, can do the final assembly. Okay, so I guess we will get started. I'll get a little closer. We're going to start with the input drum. I have everything ready to go, all my O-rings and everything laid out. This is the overdrive clutch hub. And a lot of times in here, these bushings get worn out. So uh, I have a Sonics uh, bushing here, one piece bushing that I'm going to be putting in. And there's, uh, just to let you know, there's three different versions of these bushings. There's the small, there's the large, and there's the large oversize. So I found that in this clutch hub on the 62 TEs that I do, it takes the large. So that, um, that part number here is 92004-L, and L, of course, stands for large. So I'll get a little closer, we'll get started. Um, this is uh, uh, probably a 62TE week for me, because I just finished a, a, a Volkswagen Rautan uh, that just got picked up. I have another one here I just finished uh, the other day, uh, yesterday, on a, uh, also on a town and country. I have this one another one to come out, and another one uh, that was brought to me over the counter. So I got like five of these to do. <clears throat> got a plenty of them. Uh, okay, so we're going to get a little closer, and we'll start with the assembly of the input drum. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, put all our lip seals on. Okay, let me, uh, maybe I'll just get a little closer here. All right, so we have for the uh, input clutch hub. Oh, by the way, this has 60 teeth on this exciter and through the input speed sensor. And this is the same, just in case you need one, they don't really go bad too often, but this is the same as the 604. So we have the uh, three seals. Okay, the two O-rings and a lip seal actually. All right, so the larger lip seal, this is all the, the client <coughs> provided me with all the parts they did, and it's pretty much all like OE stuff. Um, you know, you normally get it like a, a trans tech uh, overhaul kit, but this is the small overhaul kit that came in the kit. But, I mean, it comes with the low drum, everything. They got all seals, all new clutches. It's, uh, it's a very nice uh, setup that he got me. <coughs> All right, so we're gonna put these on here. Okay, then the other O-ring. And then our lip seal. Just make sure this is good, the lip is not tucked in. Okay, that's good. Okay, now one of our clutch drums, and one thing I did wanna say I don't think you would be able to see it, but uh, see through it, I should say. But this hole, okay, what I do with this is I hold this up to the light and kind of look through it because you got to see light coming through that. It's like a little, um, it's a pinhole, uh, like an orifice bleed. All right, so that has to be clear. If you do not see light, take some like carb cleaner, WD-40, something like that, and put it in there and kind of blow it out lightly with some compressed air until you can see a little pinhole of light coming through because it has to be clear. 
All right, so this one, we're gonna put a lip seal here and an O-ring here. And these two lip seals that come in, uh, one is, oops, you know what? This one here, I forgot to do the, on the clutch of the, the lip seal, but um, these two are both the same. So it doesn't matter which one goes where. angles and I'll kind of get more on top of the drum here uh, so you guys can see this just give me one second okay so we're gonna put the larger lip seal in okay that looks good now we have the O-ring. Okay, that's in place. And here's the uh, that little orifice on the other side. All right, so you need to see, um, again, very important, uh, light through that. Okay, and now we have <clears throat> one lip seal is going to go in this drum. Subscribe here. Okay. okay, so that's ready to go. Okay, now <clears throat> this is the um, uh, retainer for the uh, balance piston. It goes in here, and this is new because this comes new in the uh, kits uh, on the OE kits. All right, so but when I you take the old one out, I would just feel around here because a lot of times there's a step in it. All right, and this of course doesn't have it because it's brand new, but um, that's something that you want to look for. If you do feel it, I would change it because they do sell these separately. Okay, then we have our spring and a couple of snap rings. All right, so we're going to assemble the drum, and then what we're going to do again is we got to knock this uh, bushing. Well, we're going to press it in, I should say. Okay, so let me just uh, back out a little bit with the camera and we're going to start uh, assembling the drum set here. Okay, now we're going to do some grease here. I use grease and uh, STP. Let me just get this out of the way. All right, this stuff here, this, um, you know, trans gel. Anytime you're rebuilding a transmission, I highly recommend this stuff because as soon as the transmission heats up, this stuff melts. same thing with this here. This is where that lip seal is going to ride. That's really slippery, so makes the drums go together nice and 
really no chance of tearing this O-ring or anything like that. All right, so this would just get a set in place. Okay, that's good. Now we have this one. Well, actually, first, we're going to grease the inner O-ring here. Side and on the inside, because that O-ring is going to ride in here. Okay, and we'll do the inner one uh, when it's installed here. But I like to get the SDP around the outside and around the inside edges for the two O-rings. Okay, now, let's first let's get this in place, and then we'll line everything up. <clears throat> All right, so it's into the splines. Give it a push, and she's down. Okay, now we gotta line these up here. Okay, gotta line these up. Okay, right here, so we're gonna turn the outer drum. because the pressure plate sits in there, sits in here, and it's got to go through, okay? So once you line up one, they're all going to be lined up. Okay, next thing, snap ring. And I've mentioned this before on 604s and any Chrysler or Dodge product, um, 604, 42 RLE, there is a bevel here, and this is flat. All right, so the bevel has to face you to sit in, sit in correctly. Uh, let me just get my snap ring pliers here. I should have had them ready. <clears throat> okay. All right, so let me, once again, uh, get on top here so you can see inside the drum. Okay, so we're going to install the snap ring now. And the opening of the snap ring normally sits like in this area here where the aluminum is not, you know, shiny smooth. It's a little rough. So that's where we're going to put the opening of the snap ring. Also, you may need a screwdriver to kind of, you know, tap it down, tuck it into place. Uh. Okay. She's in. <clears throat> All right, if you actually put this snap ring in wrong, it may seem like it went in, but as soon as, as, soon as you select drive or reverse, that sucker's gonna pop right out. Okay, now we're gonna grease up our inner O-ring seal, uh, inner uh, lip seal here. Ply plate in for the underdrive clutch. All right, so we got there, and of course, in here for the inner lip seal. Okay, we have our return spring. Now we got to head over to the. Uh, sometimes this is not easy to get in. Uh, especially being a new piston. So I uh, go over to the foot press with a feeler gauge 
and you kind of try to tuck it in and it'll eventually go. All right, so this is gonna go here, snap ring here. Okay, so let me get set up over there and hopefully this thing will go in without too much of a problem. And I'll be right back. All right, so I got this in the foot press here and I don't want to force it down, so I got my little feeler gauge and see if I, we can tuck this lip seal in. Okay, wow, that went pretty easy. Got my uh, about 45 degree angle pliers. That's it. <clears throat> okay. All right, I'll be back over at the bench. Okay. Next step, <clears throat> we got to put the uh, three rings on the input shaft, and for this, I use the green. Uh, this is a little thicker, and you don't want these um, rings, you know, popping out. So when you load everything into the case, you'll tear a ring. So I use the green for that. And there's also a bushing in here, and you want to make sure this bushing is good. <clears throat> okay, it rides in here. Just try it in here. This is uh, actually very good. So now let's go ahead and put the input shaft in place. One more. Give it a lightly tap. Seat it, and then you have a uh, like a wire clip. I'm gonna turn this over. Get it started. Okay. That's it. She's in. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so we're gonna load up the the input drum with clutches and seals, but you have to put the hubs in as you're loading it up because the hubs are gonna stay in there. So you know this actually is really not that bad because even. Uh, what I've seen is if you get a new uh, clutch hub with new bushings, you know, you'll have a little bit of play. This really isn't that bad, but as a standard rebuild procedure, I like to put this bushing in. All right, on other ones like 604 and, and uh, the other series transmissions, um, when those bushings would wear out, it would shorten the life of the overdrive clutch. So that's why I like to change them on every one. So there's two bushings in here we're going to knock out. And then you see you got a hole here, and you got a hole in the bushing, but the hole is not perfectly center. So, you know, you got to see which way this is going to go. 
you know, to get the hole perfectly centered, the bushing will be up there. That's not right, so we know we have to put it in this way. But, you know, regardless, even if it's not perfectly lined up, if it's not, you know, all you got to do is just get a drill and drill through it. So, I mean, not a big deal, but I kind of like to put it how it's supposed to go. All right, so we got to knock these two bushings out. Let me just get my tool. It is one of them I can get out with my bushing splitter, and the other one I got to use a. It's too up and there's a lip, and I, I, I can't get at it. So this one, knock out right here, and this one we can start. Now let me just get set up over there by the press, and then we will press this in. So I'm going to line this up as best I can. And, and, and another way I can tell this is the right one on how it fits, how it fits in here. See, it fits in here and kind of stays in there. The oversized one uh, it would be too big, and the small one may is just for way early units, so that's not even an option to try. But what I found is the large bushing uh, fits. See, it kind of sits in there and I got to pull it back out. So, all right, let me get set up over by the press. I'm going to line this up and then we're going to press this bushing in. All right, give me two seconds. Let me get set up. I'll be right. All right, back. so I got this set up in the uh, press here. I got uh, one of my lights on, so we're going to go ahead and press this down. I don't really recommend banging them in because they can get distorted. So we're gonna bang it in, we're gonna uh, bang it in. We're gonna press it in flush, and then I gotta get a smaller one so we can line the hole up. But I'm just gonna go flush for now with the larger bushing driver. Okay. Whoops, sorry about that. I hope you saw that. Okay, all right, let me just get set up and I'll be right back again. Okay, so I have a small bushing driver uh, on, you know, of course, uh, so we can countersink this and line up the hole here. Okay, I think that's good. Let's release. Here's the big one, and here's the little one that I used. And the hole is good. She's lined up. Now let's see how the bushing fits um, on the uh, other uh, hub. Okay, so before we start loading up the drums with the hubs, uh, here's the underdrive clutch hub, the overdrive. That's a perfect fit. Okay, so definitely uh, pressing these in is a great idea and the hole is clear. Okay, um, once I get it down flush, uh, I use this little bushing driver here to countersink it. And this is the little set that I have. And I think I saw these um, at uh, Harbor Freight. I bought mine online, but I believe Harbor Freight has them too. Okay, so we're going to start loading this up under drive. Over All right, drive so before we assemble the input drum, I did forget to mention something uh, about the input drum steels, and that is there are two different steels. You have the under drive and reverse, and you have the overdrive. Okay, they're two different thicknesses. 
The underdrive and reverse, 67 thousandths. The overdrive, 79 thousandths. All right, and you identify the overdrive by this little notch cut in it right here. Okay, so you gotta be very careful in case the steels get mixed up. You know, you put the, the thicker steel in the underdrive, you know, your clearance is not gonna be right. So you gotta be careful. Uh, so now you know how to identify them. All right, and the rest of these, you got four for the underdrive, you got one for the reverse at the very top, and the middle pack, again, overdrive the three thicker steels with the notch cut in them. Now, if you're working on, just uh, for reference, if you're working on a four-speed, like a 604, the common, you know, the 41TE, the 42RLE, the steels on the input drum are all the same. So you can, you know, put them together, put them aside. You don't really have to keep them separate. Uh, they are all the same. All right, the six-speed, uh, we're dealing with two different thickness on the steels. So I did want to make you aware of that. And now we will continue with the assembly of the input drum. All right, so we're going to start with the underdrive. One well, that's going to be four. All right, the one thing that I have seen uh, with the 62 TEs is the clearances. I very rarely have to play with it. They're always right where they should be. Okay. All right, now we got to put the snap ring in, and the first snap ring, a lot of snap rings in this drum, is going to be this one here. All right, that's what it looks like, the two ends. This is going to go in. On the bottom, there's two lands right next to each other, the snap ring lands, so this is going to go in on the bottom. We're going to put the last clutch in, then we're going to put the pressure plate in. Okay, so just note how it comes out. This side, the step side here, uh, faces down. So that's going to get dropped in. I kind of just like to hold it down, move the clutch a little bit. Yeah, see, that's right now I can tell you that's, that's good. And we have the thicker snap ring, okay, and the bevel faces up. So we're going to put that. Okay, now the underdrive clutch clearance, they want from 36 to 58 thousandths. All right, you can check it like with, with this if you wanted to. Yeah, we'll do this one quick. I'll put that on here, zero it out. You can use a dial indicator or this. And they want 36 to 58, I have 44. So that's right where it should be. I'm telling you, these clearances on the 62 TEs, I never have a problem with it, but they still, you know, really kind of have to be checked. So before we put the hubs in, I'm going to stack up the overdrive clutch and just see what the clearance is on that, you know, even if it's just by feel here. So that one, we're going to need four. All right, that's for the first, and we're going to do these for three. Okay, so we have the pressure plate in. Let me see if I can. Just get a little closer here. Let me bring it down. Whoops, wrong way. Okay. All right, so we start with a clutch now because we have the pressure plate. And again, you gotta make sure when you have both snap rings in, this pressure plate does not move. Give me one second. Okay, so we're loading up. We end with a clutch and now we have the pressure plate. Okay, and that's why you have to line up these squares so this can go in, all right? And this one here is gonna go in like this because this has the lip on this side. Oh, but first, get too ahead of myself here. Got two snap rings. We got a wavy and we have a straight. Okay, the wavy snap ring is going to go in first on the outside of the drum and just push it to the bottom. It'll bottom out. And then we're going to put this. Uh, let me get a little screwdriver here because you have to tuck it in. Okay, where is it? There it is. Okay. And then we're going to tuck this in, 
all around. It'll go right in, no, no problem. Okay, so now the overdrive clutch, they want 43 to 92,000, so we'll just check it again real quick. But, you know, I can tell you it's probably going to be okay. Okay, again it was... 43 to 92, and I have 53. So that is perfect. Okay, so clutch clearances are good. So now we're going to take this snap ring back out. Going to take the pressure plate out and the overdrive clutch out. Okay, now uh, we need a bearing. Let me just grab my bearing. Okay. This bearing has some tabs on it, and you might just have to, you know, tap it into place gently. So if you can push it, it'll snap in. Okay? That looks good. All right, now we have the underdrive clutch hub. Like a little grease on that, uh, where that bushing rise, a little pre lube. Spin that into place. Now we have a five tab washer. That is going to go on. Okay, and on the uh, overdrive clutch hub, we have a three tab washer that's going to go here. Okay, and then we have this flat washer that's going to go on top here. And you just line the tabs up. So it sits flat onto the hub itself. Okay, that looks good. Now we can put the overdrive clutches back in. Pressure plate. You know, you can always mark, um, you know, an X or something, so you know which way uh, is up. And then we put the snap ring in. Just tuck it in all around. Okay. Now left is the reverse. We do the clutch, steel, clutch, pressure plate, snap ring. Okay, now what I like to do is just, uh, this is seated all the way, give this a little twist, make sure the clutch is free, and your input drum is complete. Okay, so next, um, we're going to get set up, we're going to do the low drum, the direct drum, and assemble the compounder assembly. Okay, so just give me um, a few minutes to get set up for that, and I will be right back. Okay, so now we have the low clutch. Uh, for the compound assembly, which is a new updated drone with the non-rotational rings, and we have the direct clutch. All right, so the low clutch uh, is on <clears throat> at launch, believe it or not, in, in the overdrive position, and as soon as the RPM reaches 150, it comes off. All right, it's on in reverse and uh, also manual low. All right, the direct clutch, uh, that is, I believe, second, fifth, and sixth gear. All right, so we're going to do um, the low clutch first, and I wanted to show you the drum. If you can see, this is the old drum. If you can see that ring move in there, I left this out so you can see it. All right, and that's why we're going to update it to the 
non-rotational rings. All right, so first, these are roll molded pistons. You know, the pistons, um, you can get separately. They're not bad, but for some reason, the low piston is, uh, is very, very expensive. And that's really the only one that is a little pricey. Okay, so this here. Kind of just, you know, we can go right down at the place. Here's the return spring, and here's the snapping. Okay, so that's in place. And we have the direct drum. This has the regular piston and the balance piston. Okay, so this one, uh, basically going to put in the foot press. Uh, you saw with the uh, overdrive drum, same thing. We're gonna, it's got to go inside the other piston, so just be very careful uh, pushing that down. And then this one here, I get like a bushing. You know, something, something like this. This is like is in uh, is a 4070W bushing that I put and I put the uh, tripod on that and push down and put the snap ring in. This can be a little little bit of a thick snap ring. It'll come right out, um, but uh, sometimes a little bit of a pain to get in. So you got the the basics of uh, of me putting that input drum together. I'm running a little short on time, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get those snap rings in place. And I will be right back. Okay, so I have the snap ring in. You know, no problem. When I press this down, I kind of had a... This doesn't sit exactly centered. So I kind of had a screwdriver and, you know, moved it around. And then it dropped in. And then the snap ring went right in. And this one, I, again, just like the other one, I used my fear of the gauge. Boom, right in. Over. Okay, so the low drum. We're going to put the non-rotational rings on. You see the little tab right there? So let's do that first. Okay, looks good. And then this one. Okay, very nice. All right, now we have our one-way clutch. All right, you might want to mark uh, I don't think it's too easy to put this in upside down, it may go, but I would just mark the way it comes out and check the rotation of the spray as well. Alright, so we're going to drop this into place. Alright, and then we'll use our new clutches and steels. Of course, we start with the steel first. Here, let me just grab my pressure plate. Okay. 
connector plate and the snap ring. Okay. Low drum is good. Okay. Now the direct drum. We have a hub, a couple of bearings, and your hub here. Okay, so one bearing is going to go here. You're going to put the hub. The other bearing will go on top of the hub with these tabs facing up. All right, these are all one-sided frictions. Now, we can't put the uh, can't put this on yet. But what we can do is load it up. Because we got to put a bearing on it, and I think there's not enough room. This end in first because this snap ring sits pretty close to me. All right, but I just want to make sure that everything's going to turn here. Okay. All right, now here is our shaft. Let me back out a little bit. All right, and we're going to put, we got some O rings, I'm sorry, some ceiling rings, scarf cut rings. They come out, they're solid from the factory, but this, they make them scarf cut to go back in much, easy, uh, much uh, easier. So we have three white rings, one, two, three here, and a green one that's gonna go here. And some models, I've seen a bearing here, you know, that looks like this, which this bearing goes up here, but I've seen one that goes here, and, and I've seen them also without it. So there may be one there, there may not be one there. Okay. Just raise this up a little bit. All right, so we can start uh, assembling this compounder assembly. Okay, I'm gonna put some grease on these rings gently so they don't come out of place. Okay, so here. All right, so first we're gonna do the low drum. So this is all the way down. So next is the direct drum. Now we got to see, might have to take this uh, plate off to put this bearing in place here. Put this a little right on. Okay.
Okay, very nice. Everything's down. And we can put this plate on. Okay, remember this end. It's gonna go first. Okay, very nice. Then we have our little gear. And then we have a, a little bit of a tough snap ring to get out when you're working on it. And these tabs face down when you put the snap ring back in. Okay. So let me get this and like another little scry. And you really just push it down until it seats in place. Okay, it's tough to see down there. Let me grab my light. And I just want to make sure that the snap ring rotates because that'll tell me that it's in place. But it certainly looks good. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to flip this over, put it here. I'm going to put some grease on this ferry. And we have our race. And it's a line up the holes. These are torque 25. I just want to get all these in and started. Get everything started. Okay, now we're gonna put this down flat here. Right, and according to uh, Chrysler, they want these torque to, let me just get this set up, uh, about 105, I believe it is, inch pounds. And there is the compound assembly. You know what we can do? We can uh, hit it with a little air. Let me just get set up. Maybe we can give it an air check. Okay, so let's give this an air check. That is the uh, direct clutch. Here is the low clutch. And this is loose. So I got nothing. So it feels good. Okay, so the compounder assembly is complete. And then what goes on, you know, when we put it together, uh, you have this shim that's gonna go on, and this gear that's gonna go on. And accompany that, what I always get for here, 
is a new hand knot. Okay, I, I always change this. You know, when you take this apart, the ends are peened in here. What I do is I take, because I don't want to ruin these, so what I do is I take uh, my cutting tool and I kind of, not slice the thread, but I slice into the nut and then I knock it out. And then I just put the big socket on it and it, it spins right off. So um, always uh, replace this, this end nut. It'll go right on like that. All right, so uh, that completes part one, the input drum and the compounder assembly. And uh, next, um, maybe we can uh, work on the pump. Uh, I gotta see if I have, uh, I'm getting, waiting for a torque converter because once the new bushing is knocked in, um, I like to try on the torque converter uh, just to make sure it's gonna be a nice fit. Okay, so I'll be back with you um, and then we'll do the pump.